Hello, welcome to the Package Manager's Weekly Sync, where we play the game of what we did last week, what we're locked on, and what we're going to do next. I have Eki Brain, I am your host, uh, and that's it. That's the intro. Cool. Uh, yep. So the link to the quick pad is in the room. You could put your name on the attendees. Hi, Stephen. And uh, uh, yeah, put your uh, updates down and. We'll take notes and that kind of thing. So can I get a note taker, please? Thank you, Ollie. Uh, I will go first. So yeah, last week um, there was sort of fun with NPM uh, that happened. And there was a conversation on Twitter uh, where Fedor said, why don't we do a distributed version of NPM? And some people talked about some stuff and then I kind of waded in because they were saying, oh yeah, we tried IPFS, but it was really slow. Um, and I said, well, we're, we're working on that. Uh, but got in the conversation with um, uh, Kat Martin, Martin, Martin uh, who is working on the NPM CLI. And she suggested adding support for IPFS as a uh, extension of Pakote, which I tried to do earlier in the year, um, but she had some pointers on how to do it. So I did it. Uh, and now there's a PR open against Pocote, which should, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this thing properly. Um, apparently it's Portuguese. Uh, so I don't know. Anyway, so I keep calling it Pocote, uh, and I'll explain that later. But yeah, uh, anyway, so that PR went in, that was cool. Uh, hopefully they might merge it, and then we will have IPFS and IPNS support in um, NPM, which would be a pretty big win. Uh, yeah, cool. So then I also tried to look at uh, some bugs in NPM and IPFS. Um, found some problems with the MFS, uh, so fixing them. And then that's going to be me for that week, and I'll probably uh, do more NPM and IPFS next week. And I'm not blocked on anything. That is me. Uh, Andrew's not here. Would anybody else like to give an update? There is ongoing, can you mute? There's ongoing discussions about what a NPM on IPFS app should look like. Um, if there's nothing else on the agenda for this meeting, it'd be good to get people's thoughts on that. One of the, the, one of the most boring questions, but also fundamental to how we start, it seems to be, should it be a specific, so that the, the backstory is, a, a desktop app seems like a neat way of tr tricking people into running along, uh, running a demon in the background. So encouraging, encouraging. Um, it's the Trojan horse by which we encourage co-hosting and all the good behaviors that we want to see right now. If you run, uh, get people badges for running it for longer. You are the best async rehoster. Um, right now, if you run npm ipfs hyphen npm, you get a short-lived JS ipfs in process daemon that fetches. So it basically encourages you to behave like a leech when you probably came to this project hoping to not do that. If you're a kind of egalitarian co-hoster, chances are you were hoping to do some co-hosting. Um, so then the thought was. A desktop app similar to where IPFS desktop has ended up um, running in your menu bar or task tray that just kind of gives you a quick way to see like basic stats on NPM like this is something that you don't get from NPM today so just knowing from my usage which modules I depend on regularly and mm -hmm. that could also surface like interesting things in your subtree and then also being able to demonstrate back like you've downloaded these modules a million times and you've rehosted, like you've given back n copies of of async for example um as a way of encouraging the behavior we were hoping to see aiden is that a half hand yeah i uh yes there was a conversation i remember hearing like a number of months ago about basically this is that's sort of the idea people are going to think of, which is, yeah, let's, let's bundle in a daemon, we'll have a desktop app that does our thing. And then you end up with like 10 daemons running on your machine um, that are all just running IPFS nodes. Yes. Um, 
And then there's some supposed to be some libp2p daemon progress that's supposed to make this not make you run 10 nodes at once. Um, I'm not sure what the, the progress on that is, but I think that that's ongoing. Steven might have more info. Yeah, so all these things are running MDNS, right? So you, you can just do an MDNS query for a IPFS daemon, and if there's one running on the local machine, connect to that instead of like spinning up a new one. So is MDNS working across JS and Go? Almost. Okay. As I know, like in Go, we're definitely not following the spec. Um, so we're aware. I think there's a PR that Al's been working on today, actually, that, that sorts that out. I mean, that sorts that into it. I, I think there's there was like J JS IPFS skating to where the puck was going to be, and then the work not landing in Go IPFS for longer than we expected. So now he's made a compatibility shim so that it'll work either way. Does that okay, mean there is a yes. there was some discussion in Go IPFS, but I can't remember what the last data of that was. Does that mean that JS IPFS is now not supporting the spec either? It will do both. Support the spec and not support the spec, depending on who you need to talk to. I think there are also issues around, like, uh, oh, we can do it. We have to do this now. Yeah, yeah. So, about what Aiden has touched on is the first, like, thing of, like, an NPM on IPFS app. So, my, my gut feeling was a, sp a specific app would be more compelling to the large audience of NPM users. And I had some pushback on that from various people. They were like, why not bolt it into IPFS desktop? Because we've already got some users on IPFS desktop and it don't, you don't want to have multiple daemons running. Um, and my feeling was that that wasn't the right criteria to judge the decision on. Stephen. So uh, what if we had an app store? Well, indeed. So this was this was kind of Juan's original dream for the web UI and the desktop app was that it would also become a kind of like an app store is one way of describing it. Another is like a, a shell. Yeah, it's like, you know, we IPFS desktop provides the services that IPFS apps could use. It's certainly a plausible direction. My gut feeling was, as we haven't done that yet, and we'd like to achieve the immediate goal of more users on NPM on IPFS. What I'd like what I'd like to do is like consider NPM on IPFS the app as a separate entity and then see where the commonality is and then have a view to converging it into an app store in the future. Um, so, you know, newbie, so forgive me if I'm making sort of silly assumptions, but um, I mean, you're talking about sort of bootstrapping your way into being an IPFS user in many different ways. And that might just be like, oh, you know, I've used this, the whole package manager out there was like, oh, I've been using these, I've been using IPFS and NPM and this is great. And so let me look into using this more extensively. But the idea of, of this app, you know, maybe not even sort of an app store metaphor, but the metaphor of just like a bunch of building blocks so that no matter what your starting point is that you come in on, um, you can then add more things to it to be more, more full function function IPFS world E. Um, so the idea being that it would basically be sort of Lego bricks and um, you know, add more as you need and become more sophisticated as a user as you go along. But, but in doing so, you never have to relearn the interface for the first thing that you learned how to do. So if you came in just using this as an alternative to a regular NPM, that experience, even as you become like an IPFS power user, would be exactly the same thing. In the long term, makes sense? Yes, makes sense. And and again, it's like it would be nice to have enough pieces to play with to find what those Lego blocks should look like. Yeah, sure. And I mean, even just from I mean, obviously, we're not going to get that right the first time off because we don't even know what the different sizes of Lego blocks are going to be. Um, but even just from an architectural approach in general, keeping that in the back of mind, I think would would go a long way. For sure. Um, but it, it's interesting because every time you have this conversation, it's like, ah, lots of the GUI team developers were initially like, no, make it part of desktop. And it's like, oh, mm. and their fear was like multiple demons. And that was the first thing that Aiden said. It's like, multiple demons. Blah. Um, so I think it'd be worth unpacking that feeling a bit further. 
Yeah, and from a from an end user experience, I mean, there's something very different from you're just having a demon sort of sitting around and maybe manifesting itself in like a I don't know like a menu bar icon or something, versus a full functioned app itself. And um, that's sort of part of the whole Lego metaphor. You know, at what point is the complexity of the number of things you've signed up for necessitate that you actually need a separate app, um, which is an interesting discussion. Um, and, you know, I, I can certainly sort of noodle over, you know, I'm sure we all have enough stuff um, that manifest themselves in both ways. I mean, I'm just like even looking at the Zoom icon, you know, and, and, and um, how deep you want to go into actually having a Zoom client sitting on your machine. Um, I, I'm sure that could be a separate discussion, um, but I don't want to go too deep into that now, unless you want to. <laughs> it's, I mean, I haven't bottomed out which direction we're going to go yet, so it's all helpful. Aid? Yeah, I just I wanted to clarify it. I think the the desktop, like having an installed thing makes sense because from like a, a user experience thing, it's like this is a this feels like a different thing. Um, but from a technical side, we should make sure there's a way to not have not have to run another daemon, right? In the same way that if you run multiple things that all use fuse, you don't need to have like 30 fuse installations. Um, there's like one fuse installation. You can you can do this with the daemons too. So IPFS desktop already uses IPFS DCTL, the IPFS daemon controller library, that if it discovers that you've got an IPFS already running, it'll just defer to the API that's available. And if not, it'll start one, which is cool. So that's the kind of model that I was imagining. But then there's this kind of broader question of like, actually, should be totally legit for like 10 apps on your system to spawn their own IPFS demons with their own like tuned configs. Like maybe you want a, a specific set of bootstrap nodes for this specific app. Like just app specific swarms seems like a reasonable, a reasonable uh, thing. Like I would want that. <laughs> IPFS is very configurable. So the idea that you could funnel every app through one IPFS daemon seems sketchy. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you end up with like multiple, you know, say multiple people are all hitting the same bootstrap nodes because they're the default since now you have like eight connections to the same bootstrap node. So th this is where we get into things like a uh, libp daemon and like a DHC daemon, like ideally, or maybe even a, daemon, a data daemon, where like you have these separate like core components, be like system services, and then you can have whatever you want. Like you can even build IPFS in your application in the library at that point. Nice. But that's far off. Understood. It felt, it felt like there was more head nods at this stage from like something we might deliver in the next three months. It felt like the group here present lent slightly towards a NPM on IPFS app. Is that a fair assessment? Because that would help me decide a thing. I think anything that reduces the scope of the thing is a good idea. Makes it more focused. I mean, Warp is hidden rather than expose his emotional state. Come back, Warp. Oh. Uh, I, I didn't mean that as a... No, I think that's a reasonable thing to do. Um, I hope it works. It would be good. <laughs> Thanks. It would be a really excellent and positive thing if this goes well. Right on. If other people have thoughts of NPM and IPFS app, that would be great to hear, but I don't want to chew out the whole call. Anyone else got anything else they want to discuss about package managers? I, I, I had a question, which is I, I saw the uh, uh, the uh, amazing video of attempting to run IPNS things and having to wait around for a really long time. Uh, it was much appreciated. Um, there, I guess I want to know uh what how much faster it needs to be and like what the use cases are in this in the sense of the lower down you go in like the manifest tree um of where the ipns references are it's like each package then you have to be much faster if it's higher up the tree you can be much slower because you're making less requests um and my thought is for the first you know over the next quarter for the next couple of apps like how far, where in the tree do you want to put the IPNS entries? 
I think we wouldn't necessarily have any control over where the entries go because people would just publish their modules, say that their dependencies are published over IPNS, and that would just be a thing. And then when you install your dependencies, some dependencies in the tree might come via IPNS and some might come via HTTP. So really it has to be as fast as possible. I mean, IPNS as opposed to IPFS, not as opposed to HTTP. Like which things? So the, the PR that I submitted to Pakote um, had two ways of pulling down debt. So you either use a CID, like an IPFS CID, in which case you're basically linking to a table. Um, so you don't get any uh, version resolution out of that. And then the IPNS name I was using uh, links to a package manifest uh, or a document uh, which contains all the available versions uh, which then have CIDs or, or HTTP links to the, the tables and so on. Um, so the user would, would do either, right? And then all the dependencies would do either. So you, it's, it's hard to, we would have no control essentially. Okay, so that's at the, so the package level is what you're looking at then. Yeah, all the individual package authors would decide how they want to, you know, say how the uh, dependencies should be consumed. And then you would depend on them, and then they would depend on other people, and they would depend on other people. Yeah, okay, that, that helps. Thanks. That sounds like that bottomed out at really fast. Sadly. So um, since I got called out once already, and I'm, I'm guessing you guys are kind of recruiting for things that could hypothetically maybe be OKR material or something. Um, one of the things that I would really love to turn into an ask and kind of recruit a bunch of other people's thoughts about is what we could hypothetically get in the long run out of package manager designs, which would be composable in a way that's not right now. So for example, I want to work on a bunch of reproducible build stuff. And so the number one thing that's going to be important to me if I want to consume stuff that comes from the, the beautiful union of IPFS and package managers is I'm going to want to have some references into existing package managers that I can somehow compose into my reproducible builds work. And currently, that's an incredibly hard thing because it's basically refer to NPM on the network and God help you, whatever happens, right? Um, and so, so I want NPM on IPFS to succeed, of course, but also I want to like have some understanding of how that's going to, how I might dream of interfacing that in the future. Mr. has opinions. So uh, we had a lot of discussions around this in terms of GX. But basically what we talked about was uh, using NPM, Cargo, whatever, to extract the set of dependencies, and then you dump them to a lock file. And this lock file describes like how to actually pull these pieces together. Uh, so like that, it means that you, you aren't entirely, like, you aren't digging too deep into the package manager system, but it allows you to still have three feet disability. Uh, and it also works like cross package venture in theory. So like if you look at, if you look through the, I think it's a design discussion issue about this, but like we talked about having like, a, a special package JSON file that would say like the type of or just the namespace for different packages. I can't remember the details of this, but you should look through the issues we talked about GX. Yeah, uh, I suspect there's a, a lot of different ways to go about this, yeah. and they're probably going to have different properties. Like there's some things I can think of that would be really good for individual packages, um, and then there's like if you try to think about doing this ecosystemically and what's going to allow me to like keep building a tall pyramid on top of smaller blocks and individual packages, then I think probably you come out somewhere different. Our goal was mostly to uh, not go the pyramid route, but go the monolithic route, I guess, or the, the top-down route where like I have a package and then like I decide, okay, this is now, I want to declare like what this package is using, address everything, and they have to lock everything in place. So this means I don't have to like, I don't have to dig into the things, I don't have to get into the system. I just like figure out whatever, which versions of everything I should use lock that down and then I have like plugins for every single different like package manager that my build uses so that like whenever I do this build I end up pulling in the right versions of everything building it the right way. Mm -hmm. Right. Just to 
clarify, Mr. Fork, you angling at like defining IPLD structures that represent package managers that we should be talking about now so that in the brave future, you have structured Merkle native data to pull from? I mean, yeah, I, I would always love to have more things be an IPLD. Clearly that's the most queryable thing ever. Um, but, but also just like the holistic conversation. Um, like I think, especially in as much as if we're talking about OKRs, like trying to build a thing that does this in order is just like ridiculous shooting for the moon. It's, it's not even shooting for the moon, it's shooting for hyperspace when we're still running around. So let's, you know, that would be too much. Um, but trying to make it a goal to have like, to carry on some more of these discussions and like maybe have some documents of like where we think it could go and what the different, like the different categories and directions we could go, right? Like the monolithic versus the how do we build a pyramid and sort of, Whatever that turns into, I think would be really cool products to consider. So Andrew has a um, an enormous brain dump mind map thing, uh, which I can dig out a link for, uh, which has a lot of kind of his thoughts on, on on that kind of stuff. So it'd probably be quite useful. He is definitely exploring that idea in his spare cycles. You should. I know you've already spoken to him about it, but you should keep talking to him about it. In terms of like the Q2 OKR asks, I stuck a link in the uh, group chat to the current draft uh, OKR, so they're basically around um, getting existing package managers to adopt IPFS and trying to support the package manager maintainers however possible. That's kind of that's the focus as, as I see it. Do we, um, oh, so I just, yeah, I posted that link to the big brain dump in. There's a lot of stuff in there. Just transferring it to the bigger screen, OMG. This would benefit from some kind of video walkthrough from Andrew Nisbet. Maybe next week. This here pool. That's what happens when you when you're sick, you get volunteered for things. Uh, do we have anything else to talk about in this session? Anyone else want to bring anything up? Yes, yeah, so if I can grab some questions. I, I'm trying to, how deep do you think the, uh, like, I guess the time and depth of, of, a, of a set of package dependencies do we want to be able to resolve over IPNS? Um, just sort of trying to target like how fast it needs to be. Um, Steven and some other folks are interested in like how do we maybe have like a semi-centralized uh, thing to help IPNS be a little faster in the near term. Um, and the question is like how fast do we need that to be and how centralized do we need to make it to do that? I think it needs to be as fast as HTTP. Because so like, that's what people are using right now. So if, if the package manager maintainers introduce this cool new technology that's fundamentally invisible to the average user, 
And all it does is make everything slower and they're not going to, they're going to have some very difficult questions to answer. The thing is, as long as there's only one maintain, as long as there's only one uh, place to get the data from, it has to be slower because you're adding a level of indirection, right? Instead of talking directly to the guy with the data, you talk to someone who tells you to talk to someone else with the data. So it, the latency has to be longer. Um, and the question is like, what's acceptable given that in the near term, I don't see like 80 people running, you know, full NPM repositories that we're going to simultaneously be downloading from. So, I mean, we're going to, you know, we stand up to an infrastructure that has conserved things. And there are, you know, they're like CloudFront and that kind of thing, yeah? not CloudFront, CloudFlare, are like creating IPFS kind of nodes on there as part of their CDN. So, I don't think it's always going to be the case that, you know, there's only a few people in the world that have the thing that you're looking for. So, well, not always, but in the short term, like, you know, by Q2, that's, I think that's fair. So the yeah, question is, like, how fast does it need to be? Like, I, like for instance, I would be, I would be okay saying, you know, let's bring IPNS to like, a you know, a pretty reasonable time of just like whatever it takes to resolve a peer ID on the network. That's how long it will take, uh, and we'll make it pretty fast after that, which is much faster than it is currently because right now you need a lot of requests on the DHT. Um, however, that's not fast enough if you want to if you want to pull down you know a 10 depth dependency tree in like under a minute like that's that's probably not going to happen so you can say well maybe we'll use like libpop's rendezvous but that's not really built yet so yeah ollie i guess it sounds like the it's a continuum sort of question Have, has anyone given you a good answer to this because i've heard you ask it a few times i imagine everyone's answer is as fast as it can be, please. And yeah. That can so, change over time. Right. So this is the thing. No one's really given me an answer. Um, me and Hugo have each put "Let's get IPNS under 10 seconds" on our OKRs, and we're the ones currently writing stuff. And Stephen on the IPFS OKR said, "Make it under a second. and that's an order that's of magnitude. Cool. Yeah, and go with Stephen's one. It's much better. <laughs> But that requires doing, you know, saying, all right, we're going to use DNS. We're going to use like some other centralization. Why not, now. Use, D why not use DNS? Why not use DNS? Hmm. Um, because the, it's a combination of like, it's centralized and not super built for the type of validation we would be looking for. Um, It'll be fast. I like that. Also, I like fast. But like, so would rendezvous servers. So for what it's worth, um, I can bring up an example from a package manager community that's quite recent. Uh, the Geeks project, while being quite fans of the potential of decentralization, have also been in a lot of talks recently with, uh, uh, I forget the exact title of the group, um, software heritage or um, something like this. It's a very archival oriented project. Um, and they are centralized. And they have a latency that gets shit done. And the geeks people are happy to work with that. So I think that's a trade off that's certainly valid to consider. Part of this is also like Q2 versus Q3 or Q4. So, like, I think libp2p rendezvous will help. It's currently a P1 OKR that they have for this quarter. And I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means that there's a 60% chance of it getting finished the last day of the quarter, or a 100% chance, or a 12% chance. Um, I, too, love the total lack of ambiguity in OKRs. <laughs> so if, we, if it's something we, we need, then either it means we need to do DNS things or I need to put time into helping live P2P with rendezvous or we need to put more pressure on them. Um, or we have to say, well, it's okay. We'll do it next quarter. As long as it's done by then, that's okay. And like, that's the intermediate space where I don't really know what we need. I, I would say it's definitely something that we need. Um, and the order of magnitude thing is, is a great thing to shoot for. 
and even if we don't quite make it, as long as we've got some some kind of story that we can tell about how we're going to make it in Q3 or Q4, then, then that would be great. It feels like there's fewer unknowns with the DNS version of this story and that it has a centralization trade-off, but it it can be a crutch that we use to push us forwards. I think being massively, like numerous orders of magnitude slower is going to really hamper us for a long time. And it, I, I don't know of the specific work involved to get the DNS trick working, but it seems to be the, like this can this can boost us through the next couple of years. Great. Perhaps like the rendezvous is needed for other service discoveries anyway. Um, it doesn't support other types of like it wouldn't support multi-writer IPNS, but the rendezvous would. Um, it's yeah, and and in any event, even like the basic changes we're going to make are going to we'll say improve by one order of magnitude what IPNS is doing. Question is, do we need two this quarter, or is like one sufficient for now? Right, like if you brought brought it down from like you know over up from like a minute or two to like five to ten seconds, would that be enough, or is that still too slow because no one wants to wait five seconds for a web page to load? Nobody wants to wait five seconds. <laughs> no, but I think if you can bring it from a minute down to five seconds, that would be great. But that would be an amazing result for Q two, and then Q three goes from five seconds to one second. I don't think that's the trade-off. I think if, I don't know what the numbers are on the DNS. I, maybe I'm just barking up a, a full. The DNS DNS point. is probably even lower than that. Although it, it's all sort of predicated on then you hit the DHT again to do IPFS. So even if your DNS thing is really fast, you're still going to get hit up on the DHT again. So I'm not sure how much faster it's like. Your your goal is to make IPNS fast. <laughs> No, my, my goal is to make everything as fast as it needs to be without ac accumulating too much technical debt. Um, I, I don't see a well-implemented DNS trick as technical debt. It ends up being, so it ends up being technical debt because there's a discussion that no one has been ready to have yet, uh, which is, if you have two disjoint networks where you can store IPNS records, then if you go into a web browser and you type in IPNS colon slash slash on, on name, where does it take you to? Which of the two disjoint networks do you look for your information? Do you look at both? What if one of them has a different record than the other one? Which one do you show? Um, right now, PubSub is not disjoint from the DHT because it falls back on the DHT. So we haven't had to ask that question. As soon as we implement either PubSub only, which is what I'm working on, or DNS, which um, I think Hugo is working on, that's a problem we're going to come across. And the more of these things we add, the more times we run into that problem. Um, so in a sense, it is a type of technical debt. Makes sense. Kind of check. Yeah, OK. No, that was really helpful. I had not heard that before. It, it does make sense if you, yeah. I still feel like the disjoint networks issue, whilst a terrifying edge case, uh, is less problematic than no one committing to using IPFS because it's slow. Yeah, no, I and mean, we need, we need this, this needs to get done, right? I guess the question is like if, if Rendezvous is going to give us the same thing that DNS is going to do, but it's going to take us an extra two quarters to get there, do we need an extra network that we need, we're going to need to worry about longer term? I don't know. Maybe we're OK. Maybe we tell people it's experimental, and then if we decide to kill it off in a year from now, then like that's fine too. right? I, I don't know. Um, that's not really my, those things are sort of not my call, I guess. For whatever it's worth, I'd say, plus one to like make it as fast as possible as soon as possible. Obviously that's the, the optimization gradient that you want to climb. And we probably trust you to choose how to do it. Um, package management always has the ability as a use case to, it's, it's a question that is in scope for how to pursue package management is actually 
how to distribute updates. And so like within the gamut of options that we can choose to engage with in package management discussions is not even distributing updates, right? Like we can just distribute static indices and make any sort of like updating system something else. We could make a definition of a package manager that just distributes the update root hash over HTTP and it's totally centralized and just moonwalk out, right? Uh, whether that's whether or not that's a good idea is like a totally different question, but it's it's within the gamut of things we could do. So I don't know, that's that's just my opinion, but I'd say like do, do the best you can and like this application will do what it can with what can be done. <laughs> yeah, my understanding is if uh, correct me if I'm wrong, please. The that NPM over IPFS uh, does you basically just go all the way up to the root level. So like you only need IPNS for sort of this global manifest, and then you figure it out using CIDs from there. So like that's like a very low request on IPNS, right? Because you don't need to make that resolution. I, the uh, the server side, the server component of npm and ipfs, like what's serving registry .js .ipfs .io is all js on all js ipfs. So there's no real ipns at all because there's no dht in that really. Okay, I guess yeah. In theory, you could replace the the HTTP registry with a single ipns manifest, and like that would be pretty fast. Because if you waited five seconds for that, like who cares? That was the initial design goal, but then it just didn't work because it's just not ready. So yeah. yeah. A bunch of smoke and mirrors is introduced, but the intention was very much to get rid of all the smoke and mirrors at some point in the very near future. Jim. So I've, I've had sort of experience with this from the DAT protocol, because I used to work on DAT protocol. And they have two resolution mechanisms. They have the DNS and they have the BitTorrent DHT. Um, reality is because they, they they race them both against each other. The, the DNS one always wins because Macintosh, Matthias, runs two servers and there's not that much traffic on the DAT network, it's sort of small. So um, the, D, the, the DNS always wins. So as a consequence, the, the DHT was just completely broken for like six months and nobody noticed. So I'm sort of wondering if we do the racing thing, it might actually make sense to like do DNS but build like a one second delay into it to give the DHT a chance to actually, like if we can make the DHT faster than DNS, like or rendezvous or something like that, like a, a truly distributed thing resolve faster than our intentionally hobbled DNS, that might be the thing to do. Then it gives us a bar to try to, like if, if we can make the, the distributed resolution protocols um, resolve faster than then one second, then they win. Just an idea. Would you really do that? I don't know. Can everybody waiting one second? That's a lot to ask. Imagine for a deeply nested dependency tree. <laughs> Um, but the, your experience of seeing this happen yeah. in the DAT ecosystem is, is interesting. Um, they, went, they went the DNS route, and has it had any negative impact, other than not knowing that they're DHT? Um, well, no, nobody knows that there's these two DNS servers there. Like the, the users, like if you speak your browser, you don't know that. Um, but it... They've gone down, like, because it was just like Matthias running them, and they've gone down for like eight months or for eight hours, and basically nobody, none, nothing was working on that. Like the whole system was down, and yeah. nobody really knew. Everybody just assumed that their local software was broken, but it was actually there's actually for a decentralized network, there's a centralized component. So yeah, <laughs> so I I I think like long term we want to have that decentralized. We don't want to have uh, you know, somebody forgot to pay the Amazon bill or something, and, <laughs> and all of a sudden, IPFS doesn't work anymore, right? Also, from a semi-practical perspective, we, so we both have, like, the sort of goal of being able to work, like, offline and stuff, 
Uh, and also that when we give demos, the internet is always terrible and we're basically offline anyway. So it is always a little bit embarrassing to have like a demo of like, oh, our stuff works offline and then the internet's not working and as a result, the demo's not working because then, then it's obvious something has gone wrong. Um, so I, I think, yeah. Uh, I, think, I, I think there are, there are two battles yeah, here though. Yeah. Like, it's we should definitely make sure that IPFS works offline always. Yeah. But if it no, is as slow as the DHT um, and the slow I version of IPFS, but it works, you will tolerate that in a zero broader centralized network environment. Um, but you won't tolerate it when every other website is centralized and super fast and is CDN and optimized. So I, I see the battle that we need to make sure that IPFS is performing as much as possible where a centralized option is available and not unreasonable to lean on and make sure that we don't break things for offline and that it does work yeah i'm, I'm hoping that once we have some of the, the test lab stuff up and running we can see how fast these things are under we'll call it ideal DHT conditions where you don't have like a million broken links of people behind NAS. Um, just so like we know what we're dealing with. Yeah, I'm hoping that now IPFS desktop is a viable thing and it comes yeah, with the behave as a DHT client flag by default. Right. Slowly over time we might get a few fewer Terrible DHT participants, but yeah, that's just an aside. We are well over time. No, thankfully, the team meeting was cancelled. So <clears throat> that's not so bad. But does anybody have anything else to talk about? Or shall we draw this to a close? Cool. I'm going to stop recording. Thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye.